Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and if you're looking for the best new knives from SHOT Show 2022, this is the place. We just got back, saw a lot of cool stuff, and if you're just going to watch one of our SHOT Show videos to see kind of what happened there, what was cool, this is that video. So, let's get into it. All right, so this video is gonna serve as a bit of a wrap up to our SHOT Show coverage. If you wanna see the full lineups that we saw from all of these manufacturers, we'll leave a link to our playlist for our SHOT Show coverage down below. But I'm gonna go through kind of alphabetically and talk about everyone we visited and see what was best. Now, attendance was a bit down this year for various reasons, as you can understand. And while that did make it easier to kind of get around during the show, there's still too much to see. We're one team and we still didn't get to visit everyone we wanted to, but we got a lot of cool companies. So we're gonna start with Acta Non Verba. We're gonna go through alphabetically, like I said. I think I said that. If I didn't, I said it now. Um, some cool stuff from them. Uh, obviously they swung out of the gate real hard with a full lineup when the brand was introduced. And I'm a really big fan of their A100 folder. It's a crossbar locking knife with a slim profile and a pretty distinctive design. Uh, the A200 with G10 was out previously. The new A100 is injection molded paired with an LMAX blade. Really cool to see a few more companies kind, to, kind of combining the more economical handle material, such as the injection molded that we see here with a high performance blade steel. So even though the blade steel is not, in, in any knife, is not the most expensive element. The fact that you're pairing it with a less premium handle means if you're looking for performance for your dollar, these are a good place to look. They're buttery smooth in this case, they're A100s, and it's a great little profile. Even more impressive than that was their full Moku Tai version of this knife. Insane. Normally you just see Moku Tai as smaller accents because it's pretty expensive stuff but they did the entire handles out of the Mokutai material. Looked fantastic and it's a bit bonkers for them to do that. Uh, and they paired that with a Damascus blade with an LMAX core. Almost equally as impressive, quite honestly. But they're really cool knives, even if you don't get the fancy version uh, and we should have more of them in soon. Links below for all of these manufacturers, of course. Uh, next up, Artisan Cutlery and their budget subsidiary, CJRB. We'll lump them together here. Uh, some good new models for sure. And they uh, they got some stuff from Joe Flowers, of course, famous for his Condor and some of his Tops designs. Some new fixed blades in the CJRB lineup, the Hyperlight, really nice, but even more significant than them getting into the fixed blade game with a big designer like Joe is a pretty bold move for a Chinese company. They're actually opening up some American manufacturing. And there have been American uh, companies that have shipped manufacturing to China and then brought stuff back to America, but I don't, I can't really think of another Chinese company that has decided to open up American manufacturing. And they're going to be doing some premium stuff in that lineup. And kicking things off for the premium release is going to be the Kinetic. Not the Kinetic Tool, which you may be familiar with, which is a Balasong multi-tool that's also a push-button automatic, and they're the only ones doing that sort of thing. This is a live blade knife. Automatic Balasong. Auto butterfly knife. Really cool. I don't know what steel they're going with uh, just yet. Um, that might have been a detail we forgot to talk about at the show. Things go so fast there sometimes. Uh, things like that get missed. Uh, I imagine it'll be something premium, though. Uh, Oh, maybe something even American, given that they're making these in America. I don't know yet. Um, coming soon in the future, really innovative and a really bold move for Artisan. Uh, and that brand, uh, they're actually going to have a third sub-brand, or I guess a third brand, second sub-brand, Artisan Peak Performance. And that's going to be USA-made premium stuff. Really cool. All right, next up, Benchmade. A lot of cool stuff from Benchmade this year. I actually think, at least for me personally, it's one of the stronger uh, release years they've had uh, in maybe a few years. I'm not sure, I'm not going to put an empirical number on that, but really strong lineup uh, to my eyes. I'm really happy to see some stuff. But at the top of things, I'm going to call it their out 
line extension. Uh, the bug out lightweight EDC drop point knife has been extremely successful and they're taking that formula, the lightweight part, lightweight high performance and moving it over to some other models. And each one of those is going to have out at the end of the name, like the bug out. Uh, first is the tagged out. Really cool knife. It's about a three and a half inch clip point blade, CPM 154, with an orange grivery handle. Gives you that kind of outdoorsy, hunters esque vibe to a lightweight knife like the Bug Out. Um, different blade shape, obviously, but in the hand, it's another really light feeling knife. Full flat grind, thin steel, might even be thinner than the Bug Out. I'm not sure on that. I'm just going by kind of my memory at this point. Awesome looking slicer, not going to weigh you down. Probably going to wind up in my pockets for at least a little while. The same can be said for the shootout. Um, an OTF, a lightweight OTF. Previously, I would have said check out like the Hogue Compound if you're looking for that sort of thing. And that's still a great knife, but the shootout comes in even less heavy. It is. It has a CF Elite handle, so they're carbon fiber reinforced nylon material, which looks cool, has kind of a graphite look to it and is super light. On top of that, it's a, uh, I believe it's a crew wear blade with a thin Tonto profile, but a kind of almost uh, drop point type profile. The uh, It's not a super flat tip on it. Very usable day to day, very comfortable in the hand due to the shape they gave it. It's awesome. I think both of these guys are winners and both of them are probably gonna wind up in my pocket for a little while because they're pretty awesome. They're pretty great. All right, next up is Best Tech. And it was a lot of fun getting to do this interview uh, with Eric and Carlos over there. Uh, really uh, a, a great pair of guys. Uh, and we only brought two microphones, so we had to really uh, think think carefully about how we did that footage. But showed some cool new folders, uh, showed um, some premium or previously premium designers moving into their more uh, budget-oriented line. There's a new budget version of the Costa, which is really nice. But my favorite was actually the chef knife they showed. It was an O-Stop Hell design. Uh, and that's, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly or not, but I think it's Shin Cutlery, X-I-N. And it's a really cool kitchen knife designed by O-Stop Hill. Uh, choice of a couple of blade steels, 14C28N, or a heart-shaped Damascus that they're using. Not sure what the, uh, the steels on the Damascus, uh, or what the Damascus steel is comprised of. If I had to guess, I'd probably say VG10, but we're going to have a uh, full specs on that soon. Really cool to see 14C28N on this knife as well, and including a lot of uh, several new knives this year. It's starting, starting to kind of matriculate out into the broader knife range or the broader industry on some more affordable knives, which is really cool. It's one of my favorite budget steels, and it's a really good choice for the kitchen due to the edge stability and the toughness that this stainless steel comes with. Really cool. But the ergonomics of this knife are fantastic. All the corners are rounded over on the blade itself. So when you get in, in on that pinch grip, nothing's going to kind of bite you there. No hot spots. And the faceted handle is going to work really well for manipulating that blade. It's going to be a pretty agile kitchen knife for you. All right, Boker is our next group, uh, next company. Well, I guess you, you could call them a group because there's several lines. Uh, lots of good news uh, this year. From them, I'd say uh, the Subcom coming back in D2 is really cool. It's the original Boker Plus knife. Now it's being uh, updated to stay with the times. Really cool to see that. I also really like the all titanium uh, or the titanium handled version of the uh, the LRF folder. Really cool. Uh, can't say Matsuno design has a Damascus blade on this version. Stonewash titanium. Really awesome gentleman's knife. But tops for me, you guys know. I'm a pocket fixed blade guy and they're Burnley designed Lucas Burnley BFF, a German made pocket fixed blade. And it's the Barlow BFF. I should say it's a fixed blade interpretation of a Barlow slip joint pocket knife. So you get that kind of vibe, that very useful shape. Hardwood and micarta handles are available to start with. Comes with a leather sheath with a pocket clip and you've got AEBL steel. Another thing I'm a big fan of, especially on some of the things that I've made over the years. Really great. Good toughness, good stainless qualities, and that German-made precision from them. All right, next up, we are getting to Buck. And 
for Buck, it's kind of the year of the Ranger. It's the 50th anniversary of the 112 Ranger, so they've got a lot of special editions uh, coming out to celebrate that. Um, some really cool stuff. They've also taken feedback on the 110 and 112 Slim Pro lines and made some tweaks. We now have the Slim Pro TRX of the 110 and 112. Still has that slim nature, still has the same blade shapes and the premium steel, but they've done two things. They've slimmed down the deep carry pocket clip. It's still reversible, but now it is, is not as wide as the previous versions, a little more subtle. And they've also added Torx construction to these knives. So they're not pinned together like the previous version. So if you've been looking for that adjustability, you're going to be able to get it with these knives. Really nice. Uh, the non-pro versions still come with the pinned construction, but those things at the budget they're running, I mean, really affordable knives. I, I don't see uh, changing those anytime soon just to maintain that price point. Favorite thing, or perhaps the most interesting or surprising thing uh, this year from them, uh, it's going to take top trumps this time, is the new limited edition Sprint Ops Flipper. Only going to be, this variation only going to be available this year. Linen Micarta handles, S45 VN steel, the uh, the modified blade shape that the Sprint Ops has currently. But something about these limited editions, or this particular limited edition, the one we had on the floor was super snappy. A lot different action than you may have gotten used to on the standard sprint models, which is a little softer, has kind of its own unique character. Everything on this knife felt super crisp and each way is fine. Each way works well, but something about this just felt phenomenal. And it's a really cool piece only available this year. All right, next up, we are coming to Case, uh, classic slip joint makers. And of course, each year for the last several, they've had their vault pattern knife for the year where they take something that may not have been made as much, comes out of the vault, a particular pattern, and they'll do a bunch of different handle materials on this knife. This year, it is going to be the Swell Center Jack. Really nice little blade, and you'll see a lot of collectible things on that coming out this year. Um, but probably the uh, my favorite thing personally, I don't even know if it's my favorite because I love the slip joints they make too. But big news, I think, is the new Kinzu Drop Point Flipper. They're honestly creating a bit of a, a firestorm with their new aluminum handled frame lock flippers because they're doing a really good job with them. And they've taken the formerly Tonto Kinzu and added a cool drop point to it. They've also added a, uh, an OD green color to it, as well as the Marilla flipper, their other knife that they have as well. So really cool. Uh, I'm glad to see them continuing to do neat things with that lineup. All right, next up, we come to Chris Reeve. And no new models this year, but we've got some new iterations of their things going on. Uh, interesting news, they've got a new finish. Of course, they're very famous for their bead blasted finish, which has kind of a tacky feel to it. As you wear it in your pocket, you're going to get some nice uh, snail trails and wear in it. it. has a really nice personality. But if you'd rather have something that's a little less scuffy or scratchy, new glass blast finish is coming. And this is going to come on available as an option on pretty much all of their models, I do believe. And it's a much hardier finish in terms of resisting small scratches. Heavy scratches, of course, will always still show up on any knife. But this is pretty cool. It's really good looking. And I think all of the wood inlay models uh, on the Sabenza series, at least, are going to be transitioning to this glass blasted finish overall. You're not going to have the polished face anymore. Initially, I was a little disappointed like by that, but I think it looks really good. I'm, I dig it, actually. Uh, the other big news is, is if you've been waiting for the Sabenza 31 to be available with the drop or sorry, with the Tonto and the Insingo blade shapes, we're going to start to see some of that soon, both on the large and the small frames. They have some S35 VN blades still available that they're going to be putting out first, as opposed to the S45 VN that the rest of the lineup is transitioning to. So it's going to be kind of a sprint run, they're calling it. And the hardware, uh, contrasting hardware, instead of being their typical blue, is going to be silver. So it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit collectible, but it's going to be the first way you'll be able to get those Sabenza 31s with those particular blade shapes. So pretty cool to see uh, them coming out, and we should see kind of regular versions of those knives before too long. You know, time is, of course, relative. Of course, we know that. Next up, uh, Cold Steel. 
A lot of good stuff uh, this year from them. Uh, we've got a new Tonto blade shape on the 8010, which looks really good. Uh, and that comes on the standard version with S35VN, but there's also now, this year coming out, a lightweight or an 8010 light that trades uh, into injection molded handles and OS 10 blade steel. And the drop point and the Tonto are both going to be available for that. That's good news. Uh, new handle shapes on some of the Warcraft series knives, a bit more comfortable in the hand. But tops for them this year, I think, is the Verdict. It has the, a new lock to them called the Atlas Lock. Uh, and it is a little bit different in how it works interior-wise than the Demco Shark Lock, which I'm sure a lot of people are wondering kind of how those two compare. Uh, it's got different uh, different type of stop pin arrangement uh, and a forked uh, interface with those stop pins and the tang. Uh, they actually have a, a cutout image in their catalog this year of it. And we should expect to see some torture testing videos on that lock real soon, according to uh, Stickman, who we talked to behind the table there. Really cool knife. Uh, it's comfortable. You got an S35 VN handle. Uh, the smaller versions of the knife, uh, I think, don't work quite as well for me as the larger version uh, because of the positioning of the lock, again, for me personally. Um, but really cool knife, and it's cool to see them still coming out with some kind of new mechanisms, even under the new corporate ownership that they've had for about the past year. Really cool. Uh, next up, Condor. Big news this year, a lot of new Jason Breeden designs. We did the Mountain Pass series last year. Several new knives, uh, including, a, I think it's a, forget the name of it, but it's like a tactical pass. So it's not the Mountain Pass, but it's something else. Don't remember it, sorry. Um, but his Sport series, I think, is really cool as well. Four different blade shapes, all with some micarta handles and some good looking colors too, some nice vibrant colors, and thin, slicey 14C 28N stainless steel blades. Awesome, awesome. Really nice and slicey. You've got a good amount of toughness. Again, for a company like Condor, I think that's very important, kind of maintain that rugged durability. So that is a great choice. But my favorite this year are some of the extended or line extensions to the Woodlore series. You've got uh, the tactical version, but my favorite is the new Aqualore. Scandi ground blade, just over four inches, and it's got 14C28 and stainless on this. So it's the first stainless blade we've seen in the uh, the Lore series. It's also got a really cool blue Micarta handle. I like that we're seeing some more brighter colors on some Micartas lately, on, on canvas Micartas. Typically, they're not as bright as something like G10. This isn't as bright as G10 still, but it's still a really good color. And these are coming with Kydex sheaths as well. So it's going to be much more suited to kind of maritime pursuits or just any kind of pursuits. It's slightly slimmer handle, but it's still super comfortable. That steel is nice and tough. It's going to work in all kinds of different scenarios. Really love that. All right, CRKT is the next. Um, we didn't film at their booth this year, but we did pay them a visit. We actually ran uh, a SHOT Show preview right before this week since all their lineup has kind of dropped already. Their Venandi slip joint, one of my favorites this year. It's put together really well. The custom hardware on it is pretty nice as well. Uh, I also like, well, the biggest news is probably the CEO Compact. Um, really cool to see that in a kind of two and three quarter inch blade length. I think that's about right, but it's under three inches. Um, but to me, I even like uh, the new Sace even more. It's another Richard Rogers kind of executive style design. And I like the personality of it a little bit more. I like the inlays. I like the uh, the more premium clip in this case, even though the you know a tail mounted deep carry pocket clip is one of my favorites favorite styles of all time. There's just something about the uh, the personality of the Sace that I really really enjoy, and they're very affordable too. I think they're you know they're about the same price, maybe a little bit more of the, than the CEO, uh, the standard versions, but really really awesome knife. A lot of good stuff from CRKT this year. Um, Essie didn't have a whole lot to show. They've been kind of swamped with back orders. You folks have bought a lot of Essies. Thank you guys for that. Um, the CR3 is still coming, uh, hopefully sooner than uh, the last time we were able to take a look at. They certainly hope so too. I know that's been a uh, hotly anticipated knife. Um, we took a look at the Chirp that just dropped a couple months ago. And the Ashley Game Knife has seen a new upgrade to not only their, their or a new contoured handle scale option, which feels really good, it's also getting the sto stonewashed S35 VN blade steel, which is really nice. All right, next up, we're coming to Hogue. Uh, of course, they had 
Uh, the aluminum versions of the SIG K320 on display again. Uh, we saw those at Blade Show, I believe, last year, but they still haven't shipped yet, but they should be right around the corner. Um, feel really premium, very nice. We've got the new Ballista 1 automatics. Really nice design, very EDC friendly. Uh, and the, the one is just uh, the first in more anticipated releases in this series. So really cool. Biggest news for most folks, however, I think is going to be the new version of the DECA. Um, I mentioned previously, well, let me get to that in a second. First thing they've done is uh, done an injection molded version of the DECA to bring the price a little bit down versus the G10 versions. And it has the same shape as the new Gen 2 versions of the G10. So you got the deep carry pocket clip and the fewer screws all around. But Magna Cut Blade Steel on the lightweight versions. Really nice. Uh, I, I mentioned to you guys uh, a few weeks ago that it's probably we're probably going to see a few Magna Cut introductions starting to be announced at shop because people have been really waiting for it, really anticipating it. And Hogue is one of the first on this new lightweight version of the deck. Going to be really, really cool. All right, next up we come to Leong Ma. We paid uh, our good man Leong a visit and he had some of his premium Riot made stuff, but he's also introducing a new budget brand called Eutectic. And specs wise, it's right in line with a lot of the, uh, the best budget folders these days. You've got G10 or Micarta scales on the slim side, liner locks, ball bearings in the pivot, deep carry pocket clips, and D2 blade steel. Uh, and all of the uh, the three models he introduced to us uh, at or showed us at the show have really thin blade stock and a full flat grinds. They're going to be phenomenal, phenomenal slicers. Now, if I had to pick one of these knives to kind of be the winner of the Eutectic range uh, in the, uh, the from the models released, I'd probably go with the binary. It's got a long kind of drop point blade, three and three quarter inches, three and a half inch cutting edge. And it's got a bit of a vibe like the Civivi Elementum, which folks love in the three inch range. Of course, they've released a larger version with a button lock. But if you wanted kind of a larger Elementum, but didn't really want to go with the button lock without any kind of flipper tab, you still want the flippiness of the Elementum. Check this guy out. It's got both a top flipper and a standard flipper. It's got a similar vibe overall, especially when you come to the blade. Flat ground instead of hollow ground, that's going to be a little bit of, diff of a difference, but it's going to have some phenomenal edge geometry going on, and they're built exceptionally well also. So look for those uh, real soon, I should say, at the Knife Center. We're really excited about this particular brand. All right, next up, Microtech. The SOCOM Bravo is uh, the big news this year, and it's an imported knife, uh, and it's designed to kind of increase the availability of the manual SOCOM folders. The USA made SOCOM Elite doesn't come around that often. Uh, they made uh, these are made by Reich knives, and the quality of them is exceptionally good. Uh, it's not going to be any less expensive than a SOCOM Elite, unfortunately, for folks that might have been hoping that. Uh, they are right about the same price because what they've done is they've made all of the materials more premium than you would get on the similarly priced SOCOM Elite. I mean, we're dealing with M390 steel. You can get it in the Tonto or the straight clip point profile. Uh, they're frame locks, not any kind of a uh, liner lock, or of course, you know, not a button lock like the uh, automatic versions. Full titanium chassis, uh, carbon fiber inlays. They feel excellent. Uh, really, really nicely put together. But yeah, the big the big news there is not that they're going to be more affordable, but you're going to actually be able to get your hands on them sooner rather than waiting and waiting and waiting, which is pretty nice. All right, MKM, Maniago Knife Makers Partnership. Really, really cool company. Uh, this year we saw uh, two big things, I think. I couldn't decide which would be like the best for me, but we've got the new Macro Pocket Fix Blade uh, from Jesper Vaknez. And we had the micro. Now we have a larger version, a little more to hold on to, a little more cutting length. You've got the uh, the clip pointer drop point blade as well as the modified sheep's foot. Uh, otherwise, specs are about the same. Same kind of steel, same kind of handle options. I believe it's M390 on the blades, and you get that magnetic pocket sheath to make it very easy to carry day to day and very kind to your pockets. Unlike some uh, you know folders that might kind of tear things up a little bit. Uh, Tied with that for me is the new Flame Light. 
big fan of this design. It's of course based on Michael Zeba's MS3 flipper and they've tweaked things a little bit and they're making this in a liner lock version now as opposed to the frame lock version of before. And some folks may like that, some folks may not. One of the things or one of the advantages of it in this case is the flipping action is even snappier. Just the way they're able to do their detents on the liner locks feels that much better than the way they do their frame locks because since they don't have to worry about pressure on the lock bar when, you, when you're holding it, since the liner lock itself is covered up, they can make the detent a little bit stronger, a little bit crisper, and it fires that much better as a result. Plus, deep carry pocket clip mounted from the tail of the knife, which, as I mentioned, is one of my favorite things ever. Uh, you've got it on this knife. You've got the same handle uh, materials and the same blades, both the uh, dagger and the drop point. single edge dagger. Make sure you know that, but... Really, really cool knives. Next up is Ontario. Uh, old Hickory slip joint. Big news. Uh, they felt really good. 1075 carbon steel and the uh, the hardwood handles. Looks really cool. What can I say? Uh, new blade shapes with the Rat 3 handles. Uh, we saw this year some more kind of workmanlike uh, blades as opposed to kind of like the outdoor survival stuff. Cool to see that range expanding. Biggest news, though, is probably, well, I don't know if it's the biggest news. The rat, uh, new rat knives are pretty big news, but the Blackbird in S35 VN steel. Cool to see that uh, knife kind of being a contender again with some of the greater uh, American-made survival knives out there. And me, being a bit of a nerd, the sheath on this knife was really cool. I like the new zipper pouch they've got on the front of it. Maybe I'm nerding out a little bit there. But I think the winner for Ontario this year is much less expensive. Their new Camp Craft or Camp Plus kitchen folders. These are going to be super affordable. Uh, we don't have uh, final pricing on this, but it shouldn't be any more than, I think, around $15, give or take a little bit. Really nice. Folding, lockback handles, kitchen-inspired blades. you got a small bread knife, a santoku, and... A chef knife, which is kind of the Santoku, but without the scallops and with a hollow grind instead. I really like these things. These are going to be really, really cool and really easy to recommend all over the place. Uh, which brings us to P with ProTech. Obviously, uh, their new Terzola designed automatic, uh, auto version of the ATCF, one of his famous long lived tactical designs. Really, really cool. Really well put together. But I think even uh, more exciting news for a lot of folks that have wanted one of Protec's button lock knives, but wanted more of a traditional blade shape versus the Warncliffe or Reverse Tonto on the Malibu, the Mordax is now going to be much more widely available to dealers everywhere. So you've got a slightly bigger knife with a drop point blade, and you've got their awesome, awesome button lock action. Really cool. I'm excited about this one. And at some point, we're probably going to be seeing some Magna Cut here as well. The uh, the Terzola knife I just mentioned, that is coming with Magna Cut. So it's real cool to see Protec kind of leaning into the demand there as well. Uh, next up, Revo. We've got an updated versions of their Ness this year. They're kind of, since it's kind of their flagship flipper, they're, uh, they're improving it a little bit. You've got new Micarta handle options with slightly different shaping, more sturdy pocket clips as well as reversibility which wasn't available before uh, but my favorite from them this show was the duo we saw this at blade show again last year as well but it's not out yet it is a, uh, a flipper knife you can get a tanto sheep's foot or drop point blade but it is a multi-tool as well you've got a, uh, a liner locking auxiliary cutting tool that comes out the front has a uh, flathead screwdriver tip on it, but it has a small hook blade as well. Great for opening packages, trimming string, clam packs, that real heavy uh, plastic packaging that you get in retail stores. I think these are going to be really neat. And it's going to be something that's going to be real easy to recommend to folks out there, even that aren't knife people. It's a small enough size, and it's got that nice little cutting hook that I think it's going to have a real broad appeal. Next up, SOG tons of new models from them this year and it's probably close to tied between them and Benchmade for me in terms of kind of taken as a whole the best broad new slate of materials this year they knocked it out of the park uh, some really cool stuff uh, the new non-locking terminus and stout folders are going to be really cool I especially like uh, the uh, the non-locking terminuses they're a little bit slimmer feel really good um, but I think 
the uh, the Telus uh, comes in a fixed blade or a folder. I think for me that's the most exciting due to what you know what we're expecting them to sell for. It's going to be less than fifty bucks. It's a big broad blade, both on the folder and the fixed blade. But I'm going to give it to the folder in this case. Less than fifty bucks, big broad beefy fixed split or a drop point blade for outdoor use or any kind of heavier utility liner lock, but they kept the, uh, the handle part attached to the liner. So the handle actually moves with that locking liner to keep uh, d- dust and dirt and stuff from getting trapped in between those two layers. Feels really good in the hand feels really well put together. I think these are going to be winners for sure, but it was hard to pick quite honestly. Um, Actually, you know, their their Altair uh, Altair fixed blade and folders are also right up there. Very different feel from the Telus, a bit more premium, more lightweight. These are going to be great EDC fixed blades if you're uh, into that sort of thing because of their their thin nature, slicey nature, lightweight nature, and they've now got kind of a uh, more even more of a bug out competitor with the Altair than with certain versions of their Terminus XR we've seen before. Really phenomenal. Hard to pick, though. Make sure to check out that full SOG video below. Uh, Spartan, some new special editions from the uh, in the Harsey folder range are going to be coming out throughout the throughout the year. We've got the Moros, a new S45 VN fixed blade. Quick, nimble feeling, yet still sturdy. But my favorites from them are uh, under their Pineland Cutlery collaboration with K-Bar. It's a, it's a joint, jointly owned company between K-Bar and Spartan. And they've got some new Harsey collab or some new Harsey designs showing up in this uh, in this brand. They're really nice. They kind of have uh, think of the construction kind of like the Becker knives. You've got an injection molded handle with a 1095 CV carbon steel coated blade. The handles on these are absolutely astonishingly good. They feel so great in the hand. I mean. You think the Beckers feel good. Bill Harsey is a master. These feel great. But you've got three blade shapes to start out here. There is a fighter blade. There is a Nesmuk Skinner, which looks really good. But I think my favorite has got to be the Kukri this time around. It's enough length. It's going to chop really hard. And with those handles, again, they're the same on all three of these. But they feel even the best, I think, on the Kukri. It's going to smash hard and be locked in to your hand. Just phenomenal. Phenomenal shape, and these are going to come in... Well, the fighter is going to come in about half the price of the Defensa uh, US made by Spartan Knife. So, really cool. <laughs> really cool. All right, next we come to Spyderco. Uh, and we got to see some things that weren't even in their latest reveal at the show. And they're in the video, so make sure to check that out. Um, new versions of the Murray Carter kitchen knives with injection molded handles. Uh, so that's the the least expensive in the three versions of these knives that are out now. Feel really good. The balance on these is quite excellent. Um, of course, Magna Cut, uh, the Native 5 Salt, uh, is going to be released with Magna Cut Steel. Really excited to see that. We saw some other prototypes at the show as well with Magna Cut. We might be seeing that a little more either on sprint runs or... Purely conjecture right here. We might see that on some more regular line item uh, models. I, I, that is not information I got from anyone. I'm not dropping a hint that I heard anywhere. This is just conjecture on my part. Just want to make that clear. Uh, but my favorite is probably that we saw at the show, the little native lightweight that Eric showed us uh, at the table. Again, going with some of the lightweight stuff. And not only are the handles lighter than the standard little natives, the blade is thinner as well. It's going to have an even slicier shape and it's kind of putting it a little bit in the kind of same uh, strata as the dragonfly lightweight, although the little native is American made rather than Japanese made. So it's going to be another cool option and it feels really good. I got to say, uh, starting out obviously with VG 10 or actually, no, I may be wrong about that being an American made knife. I don't remember what the steel on the version he showed us uh, was at the show. So scratch that comment, but it's gonna be a really slicey blade shape and I really love the feel in the hand. Check out the uh, the compression lock Warncliffe little native that he showed us in that video as well, link below. All right, next up we're coming to Tops. 
A lot of cool prototypes we saw on the table, some of them closer to production, some of them still a little ways off. Uh, I really liked their MPAT. It's kind of a, uh, a full tang, micarta scaled reinterpretation of the classic pilot's survival knife, which of course is you know, a carbon steel blade with that stacked leather handle. Uh, this knife has a different feel in the hand, but it's got the same kind of attitude. Lightweight, going to be a good do-it-all survival slash small tactile, smaller tactical knife, about a five and a half inch blade, specifically designed by an air pilot, which it makes sense that you see that tie-in between these two there. Really cool knife. Uh, the fire edition of the Camp Creek was really cool. The big Skinner, uh, like the bullnose Skinner blade shape on that, a little bit nest monkey, but could probably put it a little more butcher knifey, which splitting hairs here, of course. Really cool, but I think the coolest thing was their new Woodcraft fixed blade. And this is another kind of reinterpretation of a classic uh, stacked leather fixed blade, the Marbles Woodcraft. And the reason they're able to call this Woodcraft is this is not just a, a reimagining or a reinterpretation of that classic. This is the new official Marbles Woodcraft. Marbles came to them and they wanted Tops to do the 21st century version of that knife. Micarta handles instead of stacked leather, full tang instead of a stick tang. Carbon steel is still kind of tops his bread and butter, so it's still running carbon steel, but you get a, uh, I believe it was a Cerakote finish on it. Awesome. Awesome to see uh, a company like Marbles doing a new version like this, doing a new, the new official version of the Woodcraft. And to go with somebody like Tops is just a match made in heaven. That's just winner all the way around. I could go on, but I'll probably bore you, so I won't. Check those guys out. Uh, next up, second to last, Viper. A uh, couple new releases this year. Uh, my favorite was the uh, the new versions of the Hug Slip Joint, which the standard versions are very recent. They just came out uh, a couple weeks ago here at the Knife Center. These uh, new, fancier versions have bronze handles and some really cool engraving on some of them, or you can get it in plain, high polish. But my favorite... I think was the uh, the stone black stone wash version has kind of an oxidized finish on it, and then they go in and mill out. I think it was it was a starburst pattern. I don't know if they're calling it starburst, but some like pops like fireworks almost. And those milled sections have that brilliant polished bronze look. The contrast between it and the oxidized finish is just stunning. And these things are built really well. The walk and talk is great. The blade shapes are really cool, and they're put together just so so well. And last but not least, We Knife Company and their budget subsidiary, Civivi. Button locks were kind of the, uh, everybody wants them nowadays. And we've got three cool new ones to talk about. Uh, the Altus, uh, a small uh, thumb stud uh, button lock knife with a three inch blade. That's coming out real soon in just a couple of weeks. Uh, the Conspirator, a bigger knife with a drop point blade and a flipper uh, is coming out later this year. It's got Action very similar to the Cogent, which came out uh, at the end of 2021. Really great action. Uh, but I think the real winner, especially, uh, is under the Wii brand and their new Ferrum Forge Malice button lock flipper. Uh, it's kind of an in-between size. It's smaller than the Frame Lock Malice, which came before, uh, but bigger than the Civivi Odium, which is kind of the same shape, but a very small size. Uh, so you've got a good mid-sized blade with the same vibe, Still feels good in the hand. There's plenty to hold on to. The rounding over of the edges, pretty aggressive rounding over the edges, makes it feel really good. Premium steel, titanium, flipping action that's excellent in that button lock, which makes it so fun to use. Drop shut action. All in all, it's a winner. That's it. That That is everyone we visited. Again, uh, we could not visit everyone we wanted to, even be in there four days because, I mean, there's just so much running around. There's so much to see. And it takes a little bit of time to film at uh, at all of these guys' booths. So there's no way to hit everybody. So if we've missed you guys, I'm sorry. It's nothing personal. It's just what it is. It's SHOT Show, baby. Um, what about what I think is best? What's, what's my personal best in show? I'll do one for fixed blades and one for folders. Um, hmm. It's tough. I didn't have a fixed blade pick. I picked that's uh, the best of the best. I was going to uh, kind of hoping one sparked as I ran through because there's a lot of good stuff this year. 
You know what? I've got to say, I think it's those Spartan uh, Pineland Cutlery K-Bar made fixed blades. Wow. Just the feel in the hand is oh so good. It's so easy for folks to put out a fixed blade out there and just kind of have some flat scales round the corners over and call it a day. These things, the sculpting on them, so sophisticated, so good in the hand. Three great blade shapes to pick one, pick from. Like I said, the Kukri especially is awesome, but they're all excellent. I mean, they're all Bill Harsey designed blades to go with the Bill Harsey designed handle as well. Bill Harsey is a master. I mean, there's a reason guys like Chris Reeve and Spartan go to him to design knives for them, okay? Big deal. So I'm going to give it to those for the fixed blades. As for the folders, it's tough. But you know what? The one that keeps popping up again and again in my mind is that Acta Non Verba crossbar locking A-series folder with that LMAX Core Damascus blade and the full Mokutai handles. Just insane. This thing should not exist, but it is so cool. It is so awesome. And you don't have to go spending the uh, the many, many hundreds of dollars that that knife is going to cost to get the same great design and even to get the same great performance because they're using LMAX steel with the injection molded handles. So you could get it, get the performance for a lot less than that full Mokutai version is going to be. But that's my winner. That's my pick for uh, best in show on the folder side. Let me know what you guys think of all the uh, the SHOT Show coverage we ran this past week. Let me know what your picks for Best in Show are. Let me know just other things you liked, too. Other knives uh, that really impressed you. And who is your uh, your Best in Show from the manufacturer side as well for the whole lineup? Like I said, it's kind of tied between SOG and Benchmade for me this particular year. Let me know down in the comments. Check out the full playlist of our SHOT Show videos down below. And keep checking back on all of these brands as these new products are going to be rolling out. Hopefully throughout the year. Hopefully none of them are going to extend into next year. We're just going to have to wait and see on all of that. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I'll see you next time.